Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market, let's figure out what in the hell is happening and what we can expect moving forward. So Tesla, once again, by the way, if you enjoy the video as usual, please don't forget to hit that like button. It does help a lot. I do appreciate it and the support. Uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is in the description below. $3 a month, you get access to my intraday thoughts on Tesla and updates as I see anything that's worth sharing. That's important, essentially. I share it with my members always first and uh, yeah the link is below if you're interested so with that being said jumping into a tesla closing the day ever so slightly up or green on the day up about 0.3 roughly percent on the day closing at just about uh 239 dollars and a half per share which compared to the market at least on the bright side is a nice outperformance but obviously we did give up pretty much the majority of the gains that we had uh throughout the day right we were up uh from yesterday's close to the highest point just over three percent pretty much gave up um yeah the vast majority of that unfortunately but the market itself did obviously take a bit of a turn for the worse you can see the market itself did close at the bottom of the day essentially so you know you can arguably blame the market for that right but tesla still holding strong holding well there's a few things that's really important to talk about let me move this over here so i have it as a reference because usually i talk to you guys about what i've already talked to my members about right but that's kind of the way i do it so first and foremost let's start off with the uh, the basics the obvious stuff right the simple stuff so like I said yesterday, we are arguably in this nice little bull flag, like this mini bull flag. We're, we're in a bull flag that's within a bull flag, right? We have the massive bull flag here on the daily or, you know, of course, the weekly, right? This one right here, right? But obviously, if we zoom in within that, take a bit of a microscopic look on it in the daily chart, you can see we're on a mini bull flag as well within that one, which is this, of course, the green lines right here, which once again, today, we came up to the absolute top. Again, I didn't move this line from yesterday, this top green line, absolutely the exact same as it was yesterday. And look at that, we pretty much resisted right at it. Like literally, it couldn't be more perfect. Like it's almost to the decimal, right? Perfection of a rejection. I wish I entered puts, honestly, but um, I'll explain why I didn't later. Now, so rejection, right? Now, that's something that we have to break through, obviously, right? If currently, it's sitting somewhere around 246 and a half, 247 to make it simple. Really, we really want to start closing candles above that. That's the ideal situation. Obviously, we're having issues. But on the bright side, even though we rejected and set a pretty not great looking candle today, I'll be honest, it's you know potentially a bearish candle, but I, it's not atrocious, mainly because I'll explain that why soon also. But what I want to point out the fact that we did close above yesterday's um the gap up that we essentially had this morning right the gap up we had this morning or yesterday's close we did close above that which is good that's a nice sign if we close below that then things would have been a little bit more shaky but the fact that we're closing just above that which it's a good sign shows a little bit of strength at least you know where it counts i guess but it's we're still closing below 240 which i'm not a huge fan of now this candle right here you can argue is a hammer candle sort of the reason I say sort of is for a few reasons. Number one, a hammer candle usually wants a small of this, a much smaller looking, like the, the thick part of the candle itself, right? Like this thick red part. You want it to be a lot shorter, like smaller. That's number one, right? Number two, you know, you also want the 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 the, the wick in this case, right? This up wick, up, upper wick. You want it to be longer. Like you want the the th the thick candle part to be like much smaller relative to the, the the wick right so in other words you want this wick for instance to be longer or this wick like this is fine but the candle is about half the size like the, the thickness part right so it's it's a little bit of a wonky potential hammer candle but another reason why i'm not a huge fan of this candle being a hammer candle and thinking oh my goodness it's so bearish is um simply because we're not really in an uptrend here like this is not an uptrend like we're we've been consolidating for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 trading days in a row. We're not in an uptrend, right? An uptrend or like something that would concern me in an uptrend if, let's say, a weekly, if a weekly candle posted a, 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 a bearish hammer candle, that to me would be a little bit concerning. Like, okay, now maybe. But the fact that we're doing this like in the middle of this massive consolidation, I'm not looking too much, I'm not looking at it too much or like too heavily. So just, I thought I'd point that out very quickly, right? I don't really consider that, you know, too, too bad. Um, what is the next thing we'll talk about? So the next thing we'll talk about is something that can be bad, right? This is going to be something definitely to consider. Um, I'm going to probably remove this. I think yeah, I'll remove this for now. Um, it's going to be this, right? So we potentially have an, uh, a head and shoulders pattern, a bearish head and shoulders pattern setting up, right? Which of course is going to be looking something like this. We have potentially, uh, the left shoulder here, we have the head all the way up here, right? Ever since we moved up to that 250 range. And then of course we have the potential right shoulder being developed right here, right? We talked about that 
before, but since it's still in motion, since it's still not invalidated, because this high has essentially matched this high and it hasn't really entered that territory of the head. If you zoom in like this, you can see right here, right? The the real, the head itself right here is, is right up this little tiny spot here, right? And you can see the support of the head was acted pretty much right where we're resisting here. So if you were to look at these candles, right? These candles in the head, these like four candles, they all pretty much got supported right over here where I have my line. I'll, I'll even draw something to make it even more simple, right? It was something like this. Let me move this up a little bit, right? Go ahead and put that there. Let me go ahead and drag this up, right? Again, something like this is what it looked like, right? That's where the candles got supported over here for the head, and that's where we're currently rejecting on the shoulder. So the shoulder is not really entering the territory of the head. To me, these head and shoulder patterns usually get nullified if the shoulder, in this case the right shoulder, enters the territory of the head. So far we're not, and we're actually getting rejected right as we were on the verge of entering it. So the pattern is still valid. So just FYI, we do have this bearish head and shoulders pattern valid. Now, if this pattern plays out, obviously it's not the smallest head and shoulders, right? It is a relatively okay sized head and shoulders. This is what will bring Tesla back down to the low-ish 200, like 215, maybe even lower than that, like, you know, 205, right? If this plays out. And the way this plays out is essentially breaking 230 because that is the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern roughly, right? Because this is where the overall pattern is being played out. And the neckline you can see is pretty much right around this like 232 to 230-ish range, which is why that level is just so important to me. If that breaks, not only we're we just losing a vital support, but we're potentially going to be playing out this head and shoulders pattern, which would be pretty bearish. And if it does play out, right, it would be, uh, it, it would take us pretty low. Like it would take us again, like I said, somewhere around, yeah, like the, the, like the two like the two teens, right, roughly, potentially even a slightly lower, like I said, 205, 206, something along the range of that. Now, the reason that that's not too much of an issue is as follows. So even if it does play out, right, people are probably forgetting the fact that we're still in this very large inverted head and shoulders pattern, right? This inverted head and shoulders pattern has been acting up for a long time. It's also on a weekly. You can even argue it's on a monthly too, if you look at it on the monthly, right? Uh, it's a little bit less. Yeah, you can argue it's on the monthly, right? We have the left shoulder here. We have the head right here. And then we have the right shoulder right here. Beautifully looking, beautiful looking inverted head and shoulders bullish pattern right here as well. So that's great to see. But the reason I'm saying this is because this is still very much in, in play. It's actually like legitimately in play. Like it's looking extremely powerful and even if that 65 minute chart uh, head and shoulders the bearish one i just showed you plays out even if it plays out and even if it brings us to let's say 215 even 205 that's fine and the reason that's fine is because well we're still technically in this head and shoulders pattern like even if we come down to like you know somewhere around that 210 ish range we're still in this range of this head and shoulders pattern this bullish one on the weekly it doesn't nullify that so just keep that in mind, right? Overall, the pattern still looks great. So whether or not Tesla does this, so let me show you. There's essentially two things that'll happen. Either we just we do get that, you know, draw down, and I'll explain why that this actually might be the case that happens when I look at SPY very soon, and we do this. Or if we just let's say from from here on out, let, let's just say we barely go down and we just go straight up. Regardless, I currently see both options, both uh, options resulting in a rally up like this essentially roughly like breaking out of this bull flag and looking very bullish because of this overall structure that we're still in on the weekly that still looks very bullish to me so just take that for what it's worth right this one of these two will happen i don't know which one but in my opinion they both result in the same thing now obviously things can still change like if we come down to somewhere around these levels let's say in theory it happens to say we come down to 209 or something like that but let's say we start cracking 200 let's say we start closing a weekly candle below 200 200. Well, that's where things really start changing. And that's where that bullish narrative on the weekly really starts to crumble, really starts to fall apart. And the bearish kind of, you know, narrative or thesis really starts to gain traction. So to keep that in mind. This is why you have to always look at different time frames. The 65 minute chart is only telling me what's going to happen within the next week. Maybe the daily is going to be telling me what's happening within the next month ish, right? But the weekly powerful stuff, this is what's telling me what's going to happen for the next quarter you know what i mean so just take that for what it's worth right that's very important to understand those are the major differences and that's why i'm looking at all these together now i do want to very quickly look at spy so spy is looking kind of toppy right pretty not great looking candle today definitely looking kind of bearish but the thing with spy that's interesting is the fact that even if spy corrects let's say we do correct from spy here and let's say we come down to this gap fill over here somewhere around that 440 ish range that'll be another drop from here of about roughly three and a half percent we'll say that's fine. And the reason that's fine is because all that does is set up a potential inverted head and shoulders for SPY as well. So that's going to be perfectly fine. And if that happens, that will bring potentially, again, and we'll see Tesla likes to do its own thing, but that will bring Tesla pretty much to about that 220-ish range, give or take, right? Could be even the 218-ish range, like the two, the two teens range. If Tesla just happens to follow SPY 
just percentage to percentage relative to, of course, the beta, of course, right? Um, or is it the delta? I keep forgetting. But nonetheless, right? The point I'm bringing this up is the fact that even if Tesla corrects, even if Tesla breaks down all the way to, the, to those levels, yes, it'll be bearish short term. Yes, it'll be bearish for the maybe two weeks or so, three weeks, whatever. But ultimately, as long as that weekly structure holds, it's looking bullish. And I'm, I'm very happy with the way it's going to be looking. So take that for what it's worth as well. So that's kind of the main thing I'm looking at right now, right? Again, the short term, just waiting for confirmation. Again, my members will always get it. Like if I see if I start seeing cracks unfolding and the bearish thesis starts, uh, you know, getting traction momentum on the daily let's say for instance or even the 65 minute chart i'll tell them they'll be the first to know of course i'll still let you guys know don't get me wrong i will still of course let all my youtube viewers know it'll just obviously be a little bit late because i record this after the market closes right as opposed to literally as it's happening so but the point i'm trying to make here is it's simple if we crack below this ascending channel right at the moment let's say it happens tomorrow the day after 233 234 that's step number one but especially if we start cracking under 230 we lose out important resist supports it turns into resistance and of course we start playing out this potential bearish head and shoulders pattern that will potentially take us down to somewhere 220s maybe 215 maybe 210 somewhere around that range it will take us down to it could be even just a retest of this blue line that we broke out of quite a while ago right before this consolidation began could be simple as that but again the overall thesis the overall structure on the weekly remains bullish until of course we start cracking and closing weekly candles below 200. so that's important to understand so make sure you are fully understanding that and of course to the upside the bulls really want to crack 247 and really want to crack above we'll just say 250 still to make it simple and that really plays out the bullish thesis very nicely so just Pay attention to those things. Those are the most important things to pay attention to. Really, really crucial stuff. Really, really important. Let me just double check on my side here to make sure I didn't miss anything else that I wanted to cover. We talked about that. We talked about how we did close above the gap and potentially we might even go a little bit lower. Truly gap fill list, potentially bounce off that. Fingers crossed, of course, but we'll see. Um, but ultimately, that's, I believe, the main stuff that I have been talking to my members about. Those are the probably the most important things. Now, I guess we'll take a quick look at options flow very, very quickly here, but ultimately, uh, you know, I'm not someone that cares too much about options flow. Speaking of which, okay, this is one I do start carrying. 2.1 million premium, 250 calls expiring January uh, 17th, 2025, though. So definitely some time there. But this is a whale. This is a massive print, two and a half or 2.1 million premium. It's a very large print. So someone's getting bullish. Someone's buying some leaps here, right? Obviously, because it's essentially a leap that implies the fact that it doesn't have to rally tomorrow. There's time. They've bought a lot of time. But nonetheless, that is something to note. But all that being said and done, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. And as usual, I will see you tomorrow. Peace.